Um, I go start at the very first slide. Do fill out this Google form. Um, we'll build another, I'll generate more examples of data visualizations based on the numbers that you pick from here. But also, the second question is particularly um, important because I want you to pick some data that you care about, that you find interesting. And it could be, as uh, one student from Block 4 suggested, human and cattle population by state. They are, this person is very interested in beef. So I will help them find out some data, but it's particular kinds of data that we're working with, right? It's largely numerical, it's uh, organized, labeled in a way that um, you can easily introduce to Python. So um, let me help with that process so you can focus on the visualization part, less so on the data cleaning part. Um, let me know what, you, what kind of data you want. I'll do my best to find something that will suit your needs. And for the time being, we'll just work with random numbers, generate your own list, just to kind of get the hang of things. Do fill out the second question. And this one is our own set of class data for more examples to come. OK, that's number one. We watch this video. And so the context of this example is, let's say you did pick um, a, a num your favorite number between 1 through 10. 11 students picked 1, 1 student picked 2, 3 students picked 3, so on and so forth. And this will be the data set we're trying to map out. Uh, we'll skip this one, go here. So in this example, we have that kind of frequency. Notice uh, 11 people picked one, one person picked two, three people picked three, four people picked five. I, I think I messed that one up. But so the indexes, the positions that are there, plus one, and these are frequencies, how many people um, picked that certain number. And one way to visualize that is just displaying the text, but that's um, kind of boring. It doesn't show us much. Um, this particular program will make use of the text function a lot. And that text function, if you were with me last semester, you've uh, played with it. Um, computer programming A, you're playing with this now um, to help you display numbers on dice. And I just wanted to point out one nuance with working with Trinket. You have to use the two argument version of text uh, align. To center something, you can't just say text align center. You have to do text align center center, or left center, or left left, or something like that. Um, be careful on there because it gives you an error and I wanted to point out that difference early so um, it doesn't stop you from creating cool visuals. But in order to get to cool visuals, we'll start with the boring ones. And here is that example. Um, this code, as I linked here in Trinket, you can make a copy of this so you don't have to type and uh, type this all out. So this is your like base code. Notice it just displays the number in your list according to said frequency. Very boring, just a list. And so we're trying to spice it up a bit. We're starting then going to our favorite function, the ellipse. We'll wrap it uh, ellipse around the number. We can see it a little better, but we can do way more. My algorithms professor was this man from Beijing, and he always says, uh, Ray, or like, Mr. Chan, like, can you do better? And I'm like, yes, of course, professor. I can always do better. And I'd never reach the best answer, because I can always do better. He taught me that. So we can do way better. We notice that frequency, like a lot of people picked ones, no people picked twos, a couple people picked three, and we want our visualization to show that. One way to show that is changing the size of your shapes, which I'm doing here. I've bolded the line or boxed in red, that part that changes. The width and the height now depend on the frequency, as represented by n in this example in the for loop. And suddenly, the ones that are more frequent have a bigger area, just like the video should be very comfortable. And let's build on that even more, not just color. Um, let's change, or not just size, let's also change color. The brighter it is, the more frequent it is, the darker it is, you'll fade into nothing into the dark background. And that's what this one does, as now you have your frequency tied to fill. This one's bright, all the other ones are less frequent, so they're grayed out, and we still maintain that size ratio too. And suddenly, at one glance, you can see, um, if I labeled this a bit better and labeled like these are the ones over here, you know this ones are most frequent, and these other numbers are less frequent. Next up, we have our classic bar graphs. You're very used to this throughout your um, careers as students through elementary, middle, and high school. Um, but as we think, if we just paste it in some code and replace it with rectangle, we have this kind of inverted bar graph. It kind of points downwards. And it's a good reminder 
do that in processing, the y coordinates go grow down positively. So to, um, in order to grow upwards, you have to do a little shift. And so you start you know, positive, and then you'll decrease the size as you move up your um, screen. So with one quick change like this, notice the subtraction in that line. Um, you have your uh, vertical, vertically growing bar graphs. Um, and then that's a very familiar example of a data visualization. But of course, we're not just satisfied. We can do way better with bar graphs and uh, just size of circles. That's why you have this assignment, where you get to pick your data, start with a list of numbers, and then find something else more interesting, and show what that data represents. Maybe it's a ratio, maybe it's a difference. Perhaps you are inspired by Hans Rosling and you want to do an animation over time. Um, I believe you have all the skills were, um, necessary to do that. And here's the new part. In this assignment, you can work in partners. So maybe you want to collaborate with someone in this class or someone in my Block 4 class and work on something really cool. Um, you're welcome to do so. Just write down, like, me and blah work together, so give us a together a grade. Because I'm talking about the assignment, let me pull it up. I've added a couple things. So the main thing is that I added some uh, lists. So if you click on the sources of data, this is just some examples of um, what I mean by like cleaned data and an example of not so clean data. So here, I had this from like a workshop I went to a while ago. It has different kinds of cars, their fuel efficiencies, along with a bunch of other things you may care about, like um, uh, highway versus city efficiency, the kind of transmission, the number of cylinders. Um, other things that I'm not sure why it matters, but also it, the model of the car and the car line. So maybe you're interested in plotting something with that and the visuals, or maybe you're interest, um, interested more in like natural history. Here's some um, population data of plants and uh, vegetation and animals in Yellowstone from 1989 up to 2010. Notice there are some gaps, but rather complete data. Things are organized here by rows and columns. We like that because they easily translate into lists. For example, like copy and pasting this bison population, suddenly I have like the data from 1990 up to 2010 nicely formatted in the list. All I do is add commas. Eh? There are many places you can go for data uh, for your data set, for your source. So here, let's go to the, uh, what is this, the Census Bureau to get some like population data. But you have to navigate and jump through a couple hurdles in order to like get there. Um, let's do this one, data tools, quick facts. And we're looking for a good amount of data. You're looking for lists. So let's go do veterans from 2013. And then I want to sort by population of veterans per square mile. Sure. And now we click on something, go. Estimates. Uh, oh no, this is my breakdown. So each time I click, it goes down even more. And then on the right-hand side, you see some of those numbers. But notice like how much sense making I have to do and clicking in order to get the data I want to plot. Um, so this is the part I want to help you with. So fill out that Google form. So I give you like nice little spreadsheets for you to work with, like this. So far, so good. Then we go back here. So that's the assignment. Some more sources of inspiration, not only the sources. This is a nice little um, website that shows you the different kinds of visual visualizations that already exist. Um, you've seen the bar chart. Uh, you've seen this bubble chart in the video and what I did with those random numbers. Density plots, so it's like frequency graph. Um, you maybe you've seen shapes that look like this, these polynomials from math. Uh, maybe error charts to um, do something else. Um, common ones that are used in, in lots of infographics. Um, have your choice in picking. This one's a neat one. Sunburst, different kinds of uh, radials and how they build and break down. So feel free to browse through here and you'll code it up. Oh, look, they even have tic-tac-toe. They call it a point and figure chart. Ah, interesting. Hmm. So lots of good stuff for you to build off of and be inspired by.
These other examples are code snippets. Um, thank you to Mr. Simon for making these. Some ones from history. Um, what's it called? A rose chart, or like it's of arcs and slices of arcs. Different pies and the area corresponds to some kind of frequency there. So here's some starter code that you'll have to type up. But here's a really interesting one, the churn off face data visualization. So somehow you're able to tie some kind of uh, information, think about it like a variable, to an expression on a face. We'll do a simpler version of this. We'll tie like frequency to how happy a smiley face is. And what, this, what the slides will show you is like, um, the smile will increase according to a certain number. There's a certain symmetry that you're playing on. For example, now this is like symmetric about the smile. This is uh, a greater smile. So suddenly we can use that to see like, ah, the happiest smiley face means that it has the most choices. The more um, expressionless ones have no numbers being picked for that. So you can, go, you can do cool graphics like this too to illustrate your point. Do so vertically. So on and so forth. Pie charts, bar graphs, those are the boring ones Google Sheets makes. I hope you choose something else and explore. Although it's a great starting point, like bend your bar graphs to get these weird radial bar charts. Isn't that neat? Questions, comments? Stocks, area under the graph. So uh, time is yours. I'll go up 